Hello, hello, and welcome to this episode of the Ready Yet podcast, where normally I would be interviewing someone, but some things have going been, been going on in my Facebook group that has been absolutely amazing, and I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you about taking action. So if you haven't seen the Conquer Your Business community, Conquer Your Business community is what we call the Facebook community. We have been doing a take action challenge. And if you haven't heard about it, go back, ask to join. You can get all the lives. You can get all the emails. You can get all the stuff. But it really got me thinking about this whole idea of taking action. And I wanted to share it with everybody because to me, it's the missing piece in so much of what we do. Taking action is at the core of making a difference in your business. And I know that probably sounds pretty obvious, right? But I'll give you this example. When I first came up with a tagline for my business, so it's conquer your business. When I first came up with a tagline, it was be in charge, get results. Because that's what I believe. People need to be in charge of their business and get out of reaction mode and make their decisions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Be in charge, get results. But as I was working with people, what I really came to discover was the big difference was in the action that people took. And so I adjusted it to be in charge, take action, get results. Because you can't just have hope or dreams or even believe your way to success. You absolutely have to take action. And as several of your self-help gurus out there will tell you, you should be taking massive, imperfect, consistent action. So I put together for you some key learnings, key takeaways, From what I've been seeing as people are asking me questions on the Take Action Challenge, as I was putting the material together for the Take Action Challenge, and really in what I have found to be the secret to success, so to speak, of how I've been able to double my income every year and hit multiple six figures in my business in like three years. So that's what I want to do for you. So number one, first and foremost, do not confuse being busy with taking action, right? Don't confuse being busy with taking action. But what action, right? That's the first people, first thing people ask me. But what action? What action should I be taking? And this is how you can figure that out. Sounds like a simple exercise. It'll be a little bit harder than you think when you first hear this. But one of the things that I help my clients do to figure out what action they should take, especially as you're trying to grow a new business or get out of a plateau, whether that plateau is at 1,000 a month or 20,000 a month. So number one is make a list of everything you do in your business. Make a list of everything you do in your business. Whether that's networking, having one-on-one coffees, confirming appointments, posting on social media, like answering emails, cleaning out your junk email inbox, right? Your growing spam filter. Write down everything you do in your business. And then circle the things that make you money, directly make you money, not six steps away from making you money, not hopefully one day will lead to make you money, but circle the things that make you money. Those are the things you should be focusing on. That's the action you should be taking. If you want to make more money in your business, do more of the things that you circled that make you money. And I know that sounds simple, but it's a really eye-opening exercise when you get very, very clear, kind of like in your face clear 
on how much you're doing with your time that isn't leading to growing your business. So number one, don't confuse being busy with taking the action that can grow your business. Number two, and you've heard this phrase before, I think there might even be a book about it. What got you here won't get you there. So the question is, are you getting ready to be ready to get ready to do the thing? Or are you going out there and doing the thing? And is that thing something that will move your business forward to where you want to be? I use this concept as a litmus test for my decisions, right? Um, I have big goals for my business. So when I'm trying to make decisions about what action I should take, I try to look from it, look at that, not from where I am today, which is default what we do, but what would a person who already achieved the goals that I want to achieve, what action would they take? Because I know how to get to where my business is today. I've made those decisions. I've taken that action. But most of the time, if we want to reach our goals, we have to take the different action that will get us there, not the action that got us here. So if you want to make a million dollars, what action would the CEO of a million dollar business take? What decision would they make? And then I, you know, I'm not completely out of my mind. There is some reality to this. You might not be able to make the million dollar investment decision, but bring it back to where you are. What's your version of it? What's your current version of it? How close can you come to taking the optimal action? How close can you come to taking the most optimal action? And then do that. Do that. The third thing is I call it my take action hack. Accountability. We let ourselves off the hook so easily. Now, it doesn't feel like we're letting ourselves off the hook easily because we're often beating ourselves up in our heads at the same time, being very mean to ourselves and judgy. But at the end of the day, we let ourselves off the hook. We have a million different, very legitimate sounding reasons why we didn't do the thing, take the action that we said we wanted to take. And we're too close to our own stories to be able to see when we're lying to ourselves. And it always sounds so reasonable, right? It always sounds so reasonable that we didn't go to the networking event in the evening because we were exhausted, even though we signed up for it with the best intentions. There's a reason that one's specific. That one's mine. I do. I sign up for evening things over and over again with the best intentions of going. But I get up early in the morning. So by the end of the day, I'm so exhausted and it sounds completely reasonable. But truthfully, could I rally for another hour? Probably. But I let myself off the hook saying I need a break. I deserve a break. I'm re-energizing for the next day. Here's some unfortunate truths about most accountability partnerships, though. Because I know a lot of entrepreneurs who will pair up with their friends who are also entrepreneurs to be accountability buddies, right? Here's the unfortunate, dirty truth about most of those relationships. Unless you are both high achievers, they often only last until you become friends. Think about that for a second. If you're both high achievers, you can push each other forward. Most of our good friends buy into our stories and we buy into theirs. So if you happen to meet a high achiever and you want to be also a high achiever and you meet at a networking event and you agree to become accountability partners, that can often last and work in the beginning. 
But once you become good friends, you're more likely to let each other off the hook if you're not careful. It also doesn't work if the relationship is too lopsided. If one of you is much further along in your business than the other one, it doesn't always work. It turns into one person helping the other person along. Nothing wrong with that, but for the high achiever of the pair, it can start to feel a little lopsided. It also often doesn't provide feedback. We've all been on entrepreneurial journeys and we can share our experiences and we absolutely all have a wealth of information to offer each other. And I, I really do truly believe that. But a lot of times the feedback we need isn't necessarily the genius zone of the person we're accountability partners with. So these things combined between you become friends, you start to let each other off the hook. It doesn't work if one of you is outpacing the other, and it often doesn't provide the feedback we need. These are the reasons, kind of like the accountability challenges, these are the reasons that I basically buy my accountability. I join programs that I pay to be in in order to be accountable for taking the right action. Part of what I look for in those groups is that in the overall success of the group, I want to be somewhere in the middle. I don't want to be at the top of the group. I want to be with a group where I can be pulled forward by the people who are ahead of me and I could provide help and support to the people who are being pulled forward by me, right? That give and get, that simultaneously, simultaneous give and get. So having a coach, here's my other little hack. Have a coach that you're a little bit intimidated by. Have a coach that you respect and eh, or might be a little bit intimidated by so that you would never think to show up not having done the thing that you said you were going to do, not having taken the action that you said you were going to take. I liken this to the fact that you will do better at the gym if you have a little bit of a crush on your personal trainer. It is what it is, right? If you've got a little bit of crush on your personal trainer, you're going to show up looking and doing better. And if you're slightly intimidated by your coach, you're never going to not do the thing. You're going to show up having taken all the action, which is what is going to pull your business forward. The next thing in taking action, measure everything. Measure everything you do and the results that you get. Because, yeah, I want you to trust your gut, but the truth of the matter is your feelings will lie to you. Your feelings will lie to you. What gets measured gets managed. And it tells the universe that you are serious about what you said you wanted to do. And truthfully, it also helps with overcoming fear. This is going to sound weird. But measuring your actions helps you overcome fear. Because too many times we look at what we've done, we look at the actions that we've taken, and we label them as either a success or a failure. Very binary, right? We think it's either a success or a failure. But if you just take your actions with the intention of getting feedback, you often aren't quite so overwhelmed by what the outcome may or may not be. And you're more likely to take the action. Think about this for a second. If you want to speak on stage or make an offer from stage and you're worried nobody's gonna buy your offer, you're gonna be really scared about doing it. But what if instead you decided to make an offer from stage just to get the feedback to see wow, I wonder if I phrase things like this, do people respond? 
Now I'm just looking for feedback. That's not so scary. So measuring the actions that you take helps you make the next decision based on data can often help with getting you out of fear because you're not worried about success or failure. You're just looking for data. And it tells the universe that you're serious about this. So my final tip on taking action, you do not have to take all the actions at once. In the take action challenge, I think we have like seven weeks versus ver, um, filled of different actions you can take. We do deep dives into seven different things. There's all sorts of different actions you can work on. Here's the thing. If you just pick two, if you just pick two of those actions and go deep with them, your business, it'll change your business. Prioritize. Prioritize your actions based on your natural skill set, your desired growth, the assets that you have in hand. Prioritize what actions you're going to take, not just for the ones that make money, but the ones that, again, trust your gut, right? Collect your data, but trust your gut too, that have a better chance of succeeding for you. Get good at that action and then add the next action. You will grow further faster doing it that way than trying to manage, you know, herding cats, all the different actions at once. And it'll keep you out of overwhelm, which is the number one thing that stops action. So check out the Facebook group, Conquer Business Community, for all sorts of insights into the actions you can take. If any questions at all, just message me. I am so happy to have a conversation about this.